Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. I hope you all enjoy these stories. Before we begin though, I unfortunately have to give a trigger warning for story number three, which slightly mentions some sexual abuse. So if you want to avoid stories like that, now you know. Also, I'm not entirely sure how to go about this, but it's starting to get harder and harder to do videos. I just don't really have as many stories as I'd like, so I may or may not have to do less videos a week. I might have to roll it back to like two or three a week, and I don't want to sound like I'm begging for content, because I know that's how it comes off, but if any of you happen to have a scary story that you would like to send in, consider sending it in at southerncannibal.com. And if you don't want to, that's okay too. I just thought I'd mention it. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into these stories. And remember to always stay hungry. So this happened to me today. I'm a 24 year old female and I live in North Carolina. The place I live in is very well known for human trafficking. So I was in the parking lot of TJ Maxx. And I must mention that this TJ Maxx is known for creepy people lingering around. As I was getting ready to go inside to grab just one item. Makeup remover to be exact. Well, I was about to get out of my car. And a very sketchy white van with no company logo or anything. Pulled up two spots away from me to the left. I noticed the people inside didn't seem to be any type of construction worker or anything like that. Something in me just told me not to get out of the car and to just drive away. And so as I did that, I noticed that they had no license plate. Alarms literally started going off in my head. I then parked further away from the store. I parked in front of a grocery store and I was going to go inside TJ Maxx from that area instead and then just walk a bit further than where I was originally parked. Well, as I was about to go inside, the same thing happened. There was a creepy white van, identical to the first one, and pulled up directly next to me on the right. I know that this was a different van, because I could still see the first van that I encountered sitting in the same exact spot. The men in the second van were staring directly at me, and as you can imagine, I immediately booked it the hell out of there. I'm so glad I didn't get out of my car. And to those people probably thinking, why didn't you call the police? Well, my best friend actually works for the police department here in town, and she told me she would mention it to the other officers there, so hopefully they'll contact me soon. Anyways, please always stay safe and always be aware of your surroundings, just like I was. I'm a 17 year old boy, and this happened back when COVID first started, roughly two years ago. I live in India, and during the time that this encounter happened, I was living in a small city due to my dad's job. The area that I lived in was actually pretty famous for drug related crimes, as well as kidnappings and murders. So COVID had just started, and I was at home bored. Schools weren't reopening anytime soon, so my dad had got me started in jogging. I would drive out to this old country road which a lot of runners used as track, and we would then jog for about a good hour there. Once I got a bit more familiar with the location, I started driving out there by myself on my bicycle. Everything went pretty smoothly for a couple of months, and my stamina and performance in jogging improved, and I was in pretty good shape. One day I was cycling down to the old country road when a man had passed me by on his bike. I parked my bicycle when the man from earlier stopped a few meters in front of me and waved his hand as if he was asking me to come by. I thought he was asking for directions, so I walked to him. The man was in his mid-fifties. He had a very stocky build and just looked fishy. However, he was talking politely and I was just a dumb kid not really finding anything weird about the situation. 
He was asking me questions like what my name was, where I'm from, etc. But soon, his questions began to become a bit creepy. He first told me that I was really handsome and he asked if I had a girlfriend, but I said no. I was athletic but skinny. I'm six feet tall and at the time I had long hair and almost no facial hair, so I wasn't exactly manly looking. I was taller than this guy but he was stocky, so I couldn't really defend myself from him. Just then, a truck passed by us and he pulled me towards him as if to save me from getting hit from the truck. However, the truck was still pretty far away from me and I felt like he was using it as an excuse to try and put his hands on me. The situation felt so wrong to me. The man just continued to ask me more and more questions, to which I then answered while being as discreet as possible. He then offered to buy me free beer, and he asked me to hop on his back, saying he was going to drive me to the nearest beer shop. I told him no thank you, but he seemed to be a bit frustrated by that. He then asked me if I came here alone. That's when my mind suddenly kicked into action, and I pointed to some other men that were jogging by the road, saying I came with them. Since this road was used by some other men who were training for enlistment in the army, it wasn't always that abandoned. I told him I came here with those guys to jog and that they knew me. The man then told me to come back tomorrow and to meet him here again. I told him sure, but in reality, I just rushed back home on my bike. I got home safe and I then told my dad all about the creepy encounter. I didn't dare go back there the next day like I said I would and I stopped going completely for a few months due to the fear of running into that man again. I've talked about this encounter to some of my friends and other family members. However, apart from my father and brother, no one else took me seriously and most just laughed it off. I still wonder to this day what would have happened to me if I had said yes to him driving me to the liquor store. There's a lot of organ trafficking and kidnappings that have happened in that city. And I'm just really glad that none of that happened to me. So, I've been hearing everyone share their own creepy stories of coworkers and whatnot. So, I thought I would share mine. A little background with me. I grew up around a lot of abuse. So, whenever I was encountered by someone creepy or weird, now I would normally call out the person. But a few years back, before I started healing, I would always panic and freeze. I would often sometimes by my family get blamed for the abuse, especially sexual abuse or harassment. So before my healing, I would often cower down and stay quiet so I wouldn't be labeled a whore by my family. My family has always labeled me a whore since I was like 11 years old after reporting sexual abuse. And it's caused a huge amount of trauma on me which is why I behaved the way I did in this story. So on to the story. It takes place mid-summer of 2019. I work at a very large church in Arizona. I'll keep the details and everything quiet on it, but I work full-time at my church. I've been working there since 2018 up until present as a janitor, Monday through Friday, but there's some days I work on call on weekends, which are my days off. No one but the security guard only is there. All I'm called to do on call is to take out trash and touch up the place just enough so it's ready on Sundays. The security guards are employed through a universal security company, so they're not hired through the church. Well, there is a new security guard that got hired on site just a few months prior. I never talked to him, but I always had a weird feeling about him. He always tried making small talk with me, and I'm an introvert, and I really hate small talk. So I would just give him short answers. If I was walking outside and he was driving by, I would always see him watch me, but I just ignored it. Here's a description on how I looked during this time. I was in the middle of losing weight, and at this time, I lost around 100 pounds. I have an hourglass figure, and I'm very developed and curvy. I always held my weight pretty well. I was a size 14 at the time. I had blue eyes, thick curly auburn hair, and from what I've been told, I'm very attractive. I'm almost five foot three, 
and I wear glasses, and at the time I was 24 years old. The security guard in question was an average height black guy, skinny but well built. He had a beard, and he was always wearing sunglasses. He was pretty attractive, and he looked to be in his mid to late 40s. I was on call on Saturday, and I had to clean up a couple of rooms, and one of the rooms is for the security guards to get water and also have their lunch slash bathroom breaks. I was told to just touch it up real quick. It was my last room, so I came in and I immediately started taking out the trash. I look over, and I saw that the new security guard was sitting there. I was caught off guard, but I just laughed it off because I was embarrassed for being so jumpy. He apologized for scaring me, and I told him not to feel bad because I have PTSD, and I'm pretty much always jumpy like that. He started talking to me, telling me how he sees me around a lot, and that he thought I was pretty. I just thought he was being nice, so I thanked him for the compliment, and I just continued on with my work as he chatted with me. He then started asking me questions like if I was single. Now, quick thing. I have ADHD, and I can be a bit oblivious, and I have a hard time finding a middle ground between not talking or oversharing, which is what happened. I told the guy no, that I escaped an abusive relationship a couple of years ago, and I'm really just focusing on healing and not wanting a relationship. Then the guy asked me my age. I told him I'm 24, and he then responded back with, well, you're very well built for a 24-year-old. I was caught off guard with that, and I actually went quiet for a second. He smiled, then said, Sorry, I meant that in a respectful way. I gave an uncomfortable laugh, and he then asked me if I do anything else other than work at the church. I told him that I sing, and that I actually just finished recording a song that I wrote in a recording studio just last month. He got really excited, and he then told me how he's a rapper. I felt relieved that the conversation changed to music, and he had started playing some of his music for me. The mood in the room changed quickly, and I started feeling more comfortable again, and I actually forgot all about earlier. I played my song for him, and also a few cover videos that I did. He offered to collab with me on some songs, and he even gave me his number, and he told me his name, but I can't fully remember it. As I saved his number, he then said, You know what my name means, right? But I told him that I didn't, and he then said, It means friend. I just nodded my head because I didn't really know how to respond to that, to which he then said back, You're a very beautiful young woman. It's a real shame you don't have a man. And once again... I started feeling very uncomfortable, and I tried giving him the hint that I'm really not interested by just saying, I really don't want a man, though. And once again, he asked a weird question. Are you a virgin? I froze for a moment, then saying, I'm waiting for marriage. Oh, well, that's good. That's the right thing to do. Give it to a man who deserves it. He replied back, I quit looking in his direction, and I started trying to place a trash bag in the trash can, as I then said, Yeah, that's the plan. To which he then replied back with, Well, you have my number now. If you ever want to feel like a woman, you can call me. I could take you out to dinner and make you feel like a real woman. I then stopped and told him, I'm not really interested in dating, and I really don't feel comfortable with men doing stuff like that. How come? Has no man ever treated you right? He replied back. No, unfortunately. And I just really don't feel comfortable. I said. Well, damn, mama. I can show you how a real man is to treat you. You have my number. And you can just call and text me whenever you're ready for that. At this point, I'm shaking. And my anxiety is through the roof. And I was fighting everything in my body to not freeze up. Look. I'm really not interested in dating. I said, It's not going to be a date. It's just me wanting to make you feel like how a woman should feel. That's all. I just want to treat you right. He said. 
I grabbed the carpet Swiffer, and I headed over to the bathrooms to Swiffer the hallway carpet, and also to pretty much give him the hint that I'm done. He gets up from his chair, and he heads out the door to the room. But as he's heading out, he looks back at me and smiles, then saying, It was really nice talking to you, beautiful. Remember, call or text me whenever you're ready to feel like a real woman. When he left, it actually took me a couple of minutes to hit what just happened. My stomach was tied up in knots, and I felt sick to my stomach and really pissed off. My at the time friend was going to pick me up and called me to let me know that she was on her way. I then told her on the phone. A security guard just literally harassed me. He told me to text or call him if I ever want to feel like a real woman. She got so grossed out by it, and she told me to hurry up and finish up the room so I can get out of there. I hung up on the phone, and by the time I finished the room, she was waiting outside for me. I clocked out and hurried to her car. She asked me who it was, and I actually saw him walking down the outside hallway, and he then saw us and waved to us. When she saw him, she was actually shocked at how attractive he was, and she said she wouldn't take it as an insult, that she would be flattered if he talked to her like that. I just looked at her in pure disgust. She told me I was overreacting, and that what he did really wasn't that bad, and that I should actually be flattered that he talked to me like that. Long story short, we quit being friends. The following Monday, I actually had a full-blown breakdown at work. I knew that I wanted to report the guy for his remarks, but I was really afraid I was going to be blamed for it, or being told I was being overdramatic. I sat in one of my areas crying for hours, trying to figure out what to do. I finally made the decision to report him. I went to the supervisor that I was more comfortable with, and I told him what happened. As I did so, I actually broke down in his office crying and having a full-blown anxiety attack. My supervisor became livid and went to the HR and reported what happened. Long story short, the security guard got fired and actually banned from the church. I never tried making friends with any of the security guards at my job again, and now I pretty much always keep to myself. I know that my story isn't super intense, and it's not the most intense story out there, but it was a very scary moment for me, and this is a story that I've never went public with. This is actually my first time publicly sharing it, and I just wanted to get it off my chest. So yeah, that's my story, and to the creepy security guard. As a security guard, you're supposed to keep people safe from creeps, not be the creep. I just really hope I don't see you again. I'm an 18 year old girl and I'm currently six months pregnant. I work in a funeral home, mostly answering phones and doing other office work. It's pretty common for people who are mentally ill or on drugs to wander into the funeral homes and my workplace is no exception. Although these people tend to be harmless, it's mostly just frustrating because they don't like to leave when we ask them to. I come from a small town where I do not often have to deal with things like this, so I get pretty freaked out when a strange person comes into the building whenever I'm working all by myself, especially since I know I'm small and I wouldn't be able to easily defend myself if things went south. Well, yesterday, I had one of the creepiest encounters. My two coworkers went to run an errand saying they would be gone for a couple of hours at the most. This was fine with me, since it was a pretty slow day, and I could handle answering a few phone calls while they were gone. Well, not even an hour after they left, I see a man walking down the sidewalk across the street, yelling and throwing his hands around. He was walking towards the building, so I watched carefully just to make sure he didn't come inside, since he was definitely on something and seemed potentially dangerous. Not something I wanted to deal with. After he passes the front of the building and is out of my view, I double check the front building one more time and I decide that I should probably check the back entrance as well. Right at that moment, I hear a loud slam in the back followed by the yelling. It was the man. He had come in through one of the back doors and he was saying all sorts of things I couldn't understand. 
but he seemed aggressive and pissed off. Of course, this terrified me, because I've never had to deal with someone this angry and unpredictable. I went to close the office doors so I could hide, but it was too late. He had seen me. I heard him start walking towards the back office door, which was wide open, and I tried to grab the bear mace that we keep in the drawer. Just my luck. I couldn't find it, and I didn't have any time to keep looking. I then heard him yell something like, Why are you hiding? Why is everyone hiding? Which really freaked me the fuck out. I ran out of the office door closest to me and made my way to one of our back entrances. We have three or four doors that lead outside, so I was hoping he wouldn't be able to figure out which way I went out. As I got closer to the exit, I heard the man running after me. Thankfully, he didn't see exactly where I went. He just heard my footsteps. I managed to get outside and then run to the front of the building. I heard him yelling and knocking shit over in the building as I went. Unfortunately, the story doesn't have the most satisfying ending. He basically just ended up leaving, and my coworker sped back to the building to make sure I was okay. This incident was by far one of the scariest things I've ever experienced, since there's no way this man had any good intentions. And as I stated earlier, I'm pregnant. I really can't imagine what would have happened to me if he caught up to me. I think the uncertainty of what his intentions were is what really terrified me the most.